got a corner. Due to the graphic nature of the following program, viewer discretion is advised. Good morning, ma'am. Are you Linda Luckett? Yes, sir. How are you today, ma'am? I'm blessed by the best. Good. And have you had a chance to speak with the prosecutor, ma'am? Yes, sir. All right, so how are you proceeding this morning on this ticket? Only, um, I was having a little problems with the fine. I had to go traveling. I had my grandbaby was in St. Louis. And okay. Then I had death in the family. My uncle. The only thing I need is a little bit more time on paying my fine, sir. And so you want to pay um, the waiver amount? Um, so it's a $95 waiver. Um, mm -hmm. How much time? Uh, can you pay it by the end of the month? Yeah, sure we will. That's okay. no problem. So let, let's do this then. We will, um, the, the clerk is ordered to accept the $9,500, excuse me, oh, 95, 95, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, $95 waiver amount by um, Monday, April 30th at 4 p.m. I'm going to set this back um, for status hearing on Thursday, May 3rd. You don't have to come back to court as long as you pay by the 30th. I will pay it. <laughs> okay. Have Thank a good day, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? All right. Are you, uh, is it Zainab Evans? Zaina. Zaina. Uh, Ms. Evans, have you had a chance to speak with Ms. Mosley, the prosecutor? Yes. Um, you're, you're set today then. Um, how do you plead? No contest. Okay, before I accept your no contest plea, ma'am, I need to advise you that you have the right to have an attorney represent you for your change of plea. Um, if you would like, uh, you could, we could continue the case for you to hire an attorney. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, you could go to the public defender's office and talk to them about whether you qualify for their services, or you could proceed today without an attorney representing you. How do you want to proceed? It's up to you. When, when does this go over range? I don't know. March 8th. Okay. I, I was just checking. There's a certain period of time that I have to have a case um, resolved by before it's considered to be overaged by the, the Ohio Supreme Court, but, but we have, we're, we're not close to that time period. So what, what would you like to do, ma'am? Your Honor, if I may. Yes. Um, at our pretrial with Ms. Evans, we did discuss the, the SIP program, which she would be eligible for, and if the court can just kind of give her another overview, I think they may help with her decision today as to how to proceed. Sure. So uh, the Selective Intervention Program, or we'll, sometimes you'll hear us call it SIP, it is for um, property owners who are first-time offenders and typically own and live in the home that, that's the subject of the charges. So if we place you in the Selective Intervention Program, then once all of the, once all of the, the code violations are corrected, the city would move to dismiss the case. I would grant that and then you would have no more criminal charges. Um, but you'd need to enter a no contest plea to go into the program. You still have the right to have a, rep or to have a lawyer represent you even if you want to go into that program because to go into it, you still have to, to change your plea to no contest and, and have a guilty finding. Most of the time people that go into the selective intervention program, once they are in the program and complete it, the charges do get dismissed. There are some people that don't complete the program, though, and, and they do have a conviction. So that's why I wanted to let you know that this is a, a good program. It'll get your, your property into compliance. <coughs> 
and then at the end of the day, you're, you're likely to not have a conviction at all, but you still do have the right to have a lawyer represent you if you choose. Um, it, it, it's up to you. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to, to talk you into things one way or the other. It's your choice. Um, I'll take my chances. I'll go without one. You'll, you'll, you'll go proceed without an attorney. <coughs> All right, so before I accept your no contest plea, there's a number of things I need to review with you about the nature of the charges, the maximum potential penalty that you face. There's a variety of rights that you're giving up by entering a no contest plea, and then there would be an effect for having a no contest plea. So I'll review those with you before I um, accept the no contest plea. Ms. Mosley, how many days is the city alleging out of compliance? 10 days, Your Honor. Thank you. <coughs> so Ms. Evans, regarding the nature of the charges, have you reviewed the complaint against you? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I need you to answer. Yes. Th thank you. Ms. Smith takes down all of the information. Um, do you understand what the charges against you are? Violations. Yes. Do you understand what they are? Yes. Do you have any questions about the charges or what they mean? No. For the maximum potential penalty, even though I, I described the selective intervention program and we hope that at the end of the program the charges get dismissed, still the city is charged that you were out of com your property was out of compliance for 10 days. Each of those days is a separate offense. Each of those offenses is a first degree misdemeanor where the maximum potential penalty is a $1,000 fine, court costs, and 180 days in jail up to a maximum of 18 months. Since the city has charged you with being out of compliance for 10 days, the maximum penalty that you could face is a $10,000 fine, the court costs, and 18 months in jail. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> By entering a no contest plea, there's a number of rights that you're giving up. One of those is the right to have a trial. And because these are first degree misdemeanors, that's a trial either to me as the judge or to a jury. Do you understand you're giving up that right? Yes. Also at a trial, there's a number of rights that you would have that you're giving up with a no contest plea. So do you understand that you're giving up your right against self-incrimination? That's your right to remain silent. Yes. Do you understand you're also giving up your right um, to ask questions of any witnesses that the city would call at a trial? Yes. Do you understand you're giving up your right to subpoena any witnesses to testify on your behalf at a trial, and even if they didn't want to come to court, I could order them to come on your behalf? Yes. And finally, ma'am, do you understand that you're giving up your right to have the city require or prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes. Next, ma'am, uh, regarding the effect of a no contest plea. Do you understand that by entering a no contest plea, you are not admitting guilt, but you are admitting the truth of the facts that the city alleged in its complaint? Yes. And do you understand that a no contest plea cannot be used against you in a future civil or criminal case? Yes. Next, ma'am, I need to advise you of the effect of a no contest plea if you're not a citizen of the United States. If you are not a citizen of the United States, I'm advising you that if you plead no contest and are convicted of this offense, then there may be certain consequences regarding your ability to be in the United States. The consequences of a conviction if you are not a U.S. citizen are that you may be deported, you may be excluded from being admitted into the United States, or you may be denied being naturalized under the laws of the United States. Do you understand this? Yes. Finally, ma'am, are you entering this plea of your own free will? Yes. I'll accept your no contest plea. I'm going to hear some information from Ms. Mosley that she would have presented at a trial then give you the chance to say anything you like before I make a finding. Ms. Mosley. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> the city proffers and states that on December 23rd, 2014, the city inspected the property located at 730 East 96th Street in the city of Cleveland and found exterior maintenance violations. A violation notice was issued on January 14th, 2015. The city proffers <coughs> the deed as proof of ownership a post and photo as proof of service, as well as the photographs of the conditions at the initial inspection date and the reinspection date of February 24, 2015. Since this time has passed, we have discovered Ms. Evans was living in the property and has a desire to move back in and would qualify for this court's selective intervention program, and the city does not object her placement. Nothing further. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. Ms. Evans, is there anything you'd like to tell me before I make a finding? No. All right. Um, based on the no contest plea and the information provided, I'll make a finding of guilty. Going to uh, special, 
I'm going to assign housing court specialist Jeff Engelbrecht to work with you. What Mr. Engelbrecht will do is he'll, he'll get some information from you and then work with you to, to put together a plan to fix the, the violations at your property. We'll bring you back, um, we'll bring you back for a status, <clears throat> we'll bring you back for a status hearing um, on Friday, June 1st at 10 a.m. Does that date work for you, ma'am? Yeah. Okay, so if you work with Mr. Engelbrecht to put the plan together and then can start working on these, if you're finished with everything by June 1st, then we'll dismiss the case uh, on June 1st. If you need some additional time, then we'll, we'll get another date and hopefully have everything fixed by that follow-up date. So do you have any questions, ma'am? No. All right, have a good day, ma'am. You too. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, how are you? I'm great. Good. My, my name is Tyrone Reed. Mr. Reed, how have you been? Okay. Mr. Reed, what is your phone number? 216-231-7936. Uh, Mr. Smith just contacted me yesterday. Uh, I guess the attorney <coughs> that he had prior to me, somehow they split. Uh, anyway, they, 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 they could not cooperate. So when I got here, I looked at this pre-sentence report, and I kind of believe that properly represent them, I'm going to need more time than the, the 20 or 30 minutes I had to go over this thing. How much time would you like, Mr. Reed? Uh, could I have 30 days to it? Are going to have a time issue or anything? Uh, yes. Can you please um, clarify whether the case ending in 7827 has a plea? No, it does not. There's a not guilty plea, and it went to the corporate docket. So this but, one has per diem fee, 72. But there is a not guilty plea on this. There is a not guilty plea. It just didn't appear after that. So it okay. <clears throat> so Ms. Mosley, it appears June 8th, 2017, there was a not guilty plea. Um, statutory period waived. <clears throat> And it looks like there was a pretrial shortly after that with the prior attorney, and it was set for a change of plea. Okay. I think in December. <clears throat> so, so Mr. Reed, what we were looking at is whether there are pleas on all the cases, which it appears that there are. Okay. The 2011 and 2015 case was a community for a turbo. Right, and those are. Okay. This one is the waiver. All right. Okay. And we can. So, Mr. Reed, there is a. We have pleas on all the cases. Um, some of them are set for community. They've been on community control. One of them is a, a minor misdemeanor uh, where, uh, and this is in the, the business entity's name, where, where the business entity was to pay the waiver but had not. Um, one of these other cases got referred to our corporate docket and there are per diem fees uh, that, that have accrued because the LLC failed to, uh, to appear. Um, so. I just want to make sure that we weren't going to run into a time issue okay. on any of these. That, so that, that's what I've been looking at. But um, so I'll grant your request. Uh, we'll continue this then until uh, May third. So that's four weeks from today. Right. And let's let's because of the amount of and the, these these will take a little bit more time. I uh, will do this at ten o'clock. Does okay. does that work for your schedule, Mr. Reed? That will work, Your Honor. Okay. Thank All you right. very much. If you need, thank you. If you need, you know, to, to look at the files. If you need to find out more information about the case where there are the per diem fees for the for our corporate docket because the the LLC failed to um, appear, you know, please work with Mr. Foster and he can get you the information. All right. Thank you. Guys. All right. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you, gentlemen. of this episode, call 664-3571 with the following information on your TV screen.